big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual Bear known to us the Big D. Sorry, my eyes are kind of, well, I've been on bored and snored lately and what have you. I just haven't been getting a chance to try and prepare myself for something that I need to give to y'all. Anyway, this video is going to be a mini reviews vid where I'll be reviewing a couple of recent films I had recently watched. And these will be spoiler free and what have you as well. So anyway, I'm going to give you some Thoughts and all that jazz. So, if you're ready, let's get started. The first film I'm going to talk about is Knock at the Cabin, released by Universal this past February. I recently watched it on Peacock just a few days ago. Anyway, the film was written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and this is a person who I've yet to review any of his films and what have you. I haven't even reviewed The Sixth Sense, even. I I was going to last year and failed. But don't you worry, now. I'm going to review some of Shyamalan's material sooner or later. Anyway, this is an apocalyptic psychological horror flick which Shyamalan wrote the screenplay from an initial draft by Steve Desmond and Michael Sherman, based on the 2018 novel The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul G. Tremblay, the first adaptation of one of his works. The film starts Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge, Nikki Amilka Bird, Kristen Cooey, Abby Quinn, and Rupert Grint. This focuses on a family vacation at a remote cabin, and suddenly they're held hostage by four strangers who ask something unimaginable. This film did pretty decent enough, making $54 million against its $20 million budget. Anyway, a seven-year-old girl named Gwen is vacationed with her two fathers, Eric and Andrew, at a remote cabin in rural Pennsylvania. And Wynn encounters a stranger named Leonard. But then he and his companions, Sabrina, Adrian, and Redmond, claim that they have never met before this day and have no intention of harming the family. But, however, they have been driven by visions and an unknown force to find the family as they foresee an impending apocalypse in which Larry claims oceans will rise, a pandemic will spread, blah blah blah. You know, you probably know, you probably know the story. But uh, this is spoiler free in Wyoming, so I'm not really going to get into that. My thoughts on this film was it was kind of, um, well, reasonable and all. It was brief, kind of shocking, what have you? I can't really pronounce it. Did the score and what have you? So it was not not too bad. Anyway, this film made $54 million worldwide against its $20 million budget. And Ron Tomeo says that although it's often less than scary and parts of the story don't bear scrutiny, the film is a thought-provoking chiller and upper-tier Shyamalan. So yeah, this is kind of a big of a slight little redemption for Shyamalan, even though Concern had watched his previous film before this, which was the film Old, which that was all right and what have you, but this one was pretty shocking and what have you, considering it, sh it was Shyamalan's second R-rated flick after The Happening, but I feel like this is kind of a much better R-rated film than The Happening was, considering that film didn't do too well. But overall, I've got to say it was pretty shocking, pretty frightening in some parts, so... I think the movie was pretty good. Our cast, though, I really enjoyed. Dave Bautista was absolutely great as Leonard. Uh, Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge playing Eric and Andrew. Yeah. Nikki Amuka Bird played Sabrina. Abby Quinn played Adrian. And, and playing Redman is 
Rupert Grant, who most of you knew him best as a certain Ron Weasley from the Harry Potter franchise. I was surprised he was in this. I didn't even know that was him. And the tra I'd only seen maybe the trailer one time, a time or two, but I didn't know it's him. <laughs> you like that? And young Kristen Chewy plays Wynn. I think she was pretty good too. But anyway, the story wasn't too bad and what have you. So. Overall, I've got to say, Knock at the Cabin was pretty frightening in a few parts, but very suspenseful and what have you. So I'm going to say that, and I did like the saying at the Cabin, what have you. It looked pretty good, too. So overall, I think Knock at the Cabin, it was pretty good in some ways. Maybe not one of Shyamalan's best, but still it manages to pull some stuff off. For my score, I'm giving Knock at the Cabin four stars. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it an 8. And now for the next review. The next film I'm going to give you a main review of is Cocaine Bear, also from Universal. This was also released earlier this year in February, on February 24th, just a couple of weeks. Well, let's see. Let's see. No, it was no three weeks. I'm sorry, not a couple. Three weeks after Knock at the Cabin came out. The film was directed by Elizabeth Banks and ran by Jimmy Warden, loosely inspired by the true story of the cocaine bear, an American black bear that ingested nearly 75 pounds of lost cocaine. The film stars Carrie Russell, along with O'Shea Jackson Jr., Christian Convery, Alden Ehrenreich, Brooklyn Prince, Isaiah Whitlock Jr., Margot Mondale, and Ray Liotta in one of his last films, whom we sadly lost last May. <coughs> now, then. my thoughts for the film was, its story wasn't too bad. I gotta say, it did have some pretty good moments with its pacing and what have you. Its kills was pretty... Wow. Now, and what really surprised me was the score. It was done by Mark Mersbaugh. You may know him best of the 80s band known as Devo. You know, Whip It. And, of course, he also did the music for... <coughs> excuse me. Various, um... Well, kids shows and what have you. Uh, like Pee Wee's Playhouse and Rugrats. Anyway... Of course, it focuses on, um, um, well, after Andrew C. Thorne the second drops a shipment of cocaine from a plane, well, he apparently knocks himself unconscious on the doorframe after escaping, causing him to fall to his death, and lands in Knoxville, Tennessee. And, well, a local detective concludes that the cocaine he finds is likely from a St. Louis drug kingpin named Sid White. So, in the Chattahoochee Okoni National Forest, an American black bear eats some of it, becoming a highly aggressive killing machine, and what have you. But apparently, and apparently, a young girl named Dee Dee and her best friend Henry get lost in the forest, and well, her mother, a nurse, comes to help. With a help from a few hours, but hell, it just gets more bloody and why have you when more people die off one by one. So anyway, from my point of view, I thought Cocaine Bear wasn't too bad. I recently watched this on Peacock as well. It just now premiered uh, yesterday. Anywho. So, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, And, of course, the film was actually um, dedicated in memory of Mr. Leo. Though the film lost to um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania when opened, it still did pretty well, going on to make $85 million worldwide. Now, for our cast, Carrie Russell, I was surprised to see her in this playing Sorry. This was the second type of horror thrill I've seen her in, the first being Antlers. Alden Ehrenreich plays the character of Eddie. 
O'Shea Jackson Jr. plays David, and the late Ray Leo plays Sid. Anyway, now, um, I like Brooklyn Prince playing Dee Dee. Wow, she was something. Christian Convery, yeah, he was pretty good as Henry. Margot Mindell was pretty funny. A lot of them were pretty funny and what have you. Uh, I think some of it just kind of lost. I don't know. It's, um, with some of its lines and what have you. Some of its. But I did like the cocaine bear, though. It was freak. That thing was. Well, actually, it was a sheep. Whoops, sorry. I didn't mean to spit that out. Not bad. Um, but. Still, I'm going to say. Cocaine Bear was not too bad. It was pretty killer and what have you. Anyway, it got mixed reviews, and Ron Tamil says despite the film's half-baked plot and uneven acting, the titular Fur Fiend's scene snoring frenzy will give B-movie enthusiasts a contact high. Yeah, I agree. This is kind of one of those B-movies and what have you. So, yeah, the story's kind of um, a mixed bag and what have you, and well, the acting's not, well, completely bad, completely, completely. But I will say the kills were pretty shocking and surprising, as as though I could imagine, why have you. So anyway, I think Hulk King Bear wasn't too bad at all. My score for the film is going to be three and a half stars. And on a scale of one to ten, I'm going to give it a seven. So... These films are currently now available to stream on VO on the Man, and they're also available on Peacock. So, check out Knock at the Cabin and Cocaine Bear if you haven't already. If you've seen one of these films, or if you've seen both of them, let me know what you thought about those films in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you my review of House Party. Oh, and let me give you an early heads up and what have you. Once I'm done with House Party, now, there will be some changes to my schedule. Now, I've decided I'm going to do House Party 2 and 3 on Monday. And Tuesday, I've this, I'm have i pushing up my review of the fourth one to come out before I do the TV Law on Mind Morphin Power Rangers. Making Wednesday just clear for the new Power Rangers reunion flick, which I'm looking forward to. But you're still, you'll still get my review of... The, the fifth film on Thursday and the remake reboot on Friday. Okay? Good. That about covers it. So, thank you. And I hope you like this. And if you like this video, consider checking out my spoiler free reviews for some of these recent, these other recent films. In the upper left hand corner is my review of Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. And of course, all of these are spoiler free. In the upper right-hand corner is my review of Dungeons & Dragons, Armed Among Thieves, which that was a pretty good movie. Or go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my spoiler-free review for another recent horror film from Universal. It's more of a sci-fi comedy horror, and that being Megan. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video, games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.